decision. What would you say to somebody that's like, I've never heard his voice. And as I read this, I know I'm, I'm getting to my question. As I read this, Jim shared a story of where like he asked God a question and he never got a response. He felt like something was wrong with him. He felt like, uh, he felt like, yeah, why aren't, why aren't you speaking to me, God? Like, I want to hear your voice. I'm asking. All my friends are hearing. And he went down the road of studying the scripture. And he came up with this conclusion, as well as did a lot of other people. This is just the first book that I've read about this. Um, what would you say to someone that, that takes that stance? Um, God wants to heal you from death by disappointment. And here's what I'm saying. A lot of his theology, what you just shared, was based out of a moment of, God, I'm asking you this question. I need you to talk to me. And he didn't hear for, for whatever reason. And now that created a disappointment, which has now led him into a certain doctrine or belief system. I, I was raised in, in a church that didn't flow in the gifts, all those things. Love, thankful for my, my heritage. I tell people I'm a recovering Calvinist. Uh, I'm thankful for, for, for my roots. Uh, I just know that God showed up in my room when I was six and spoke to me that I was called to go around the world preaching the gospel. Uh, I lived a miserable, existent life running away from God. And when I committed suicide on January 17, 1997, Jesus came and stood in my room, and he woke me up, and he called me son, and he repeated those words to me, son, I've called you to go around the world preaching the gospel, wherever you know lives be touched and changed. So people ask me, David, how do you know the voice of God? And I tell them this, it's the same voice that woke me up. It's always the same voice. It's the same voice. It's been consistent in my life. I have, you know, amazing kids. One of my sons, Josh, was born without the, with the cord wrapped around his neck four times, three times, didn't breathe for five minutes. God brought him to life. He's very sensitive. I was taking him out a few weeks or a few years ago, and uh, he wasn't saying anything. And I said, "Everything all right, Josh?" He said, "Yeah, Dad. You don't have to say anything for me to know your heart." And I realized he wasn't just talking to me about our relationship, but I felt like he was talking to me about the Lord. We went to Starbucks. We were talking, and I said, "Does God talk?" He said, "Yeah, Dad, all the time." I said, "How's that happen?" He goes, "I talk to him. And he talks back to me," and. And it was this childlike faith in it, like he, he grew up in it. I think truth, divorce from experience, always leaves you in the realm of doubt. But I also think equally it's dangerous to have an experience without truth. Hmm. So I, in Pensacola, there's these guys that stand on street corners. Um, every Saturday from 2 to 4, preaching their guts out, man. They got signs, they got Bibles, they're out there sometimes with their wives and kids. They're passionate. And uh, I watch these same people, from the same stream, every Saturday, faithful, man. If you want to know faithful, that's faithful. Right. And one day, uh, there was a gas, used to be a gas station on that corner uh, where, where sometimes they were. I got gas, and I just went over. Uh, I bought some water. I went over to this, to this guy. I said, man, how long have you been doing this? He said, I've been doing it 26 years, every Saturday for 26 years. I said, how, how many people have given their life to the Lord? He said, I don't know of anyone that's given their life to the Lord for me preaching at cars and at stoplights. And and um, and, and I said, well, how's it working for you? Said, Sometimes it's just really frustrating. I said, but do you feel called to preach? He said, yeah, why do you ask? And I, said, I began to tell him who I was, what I did. And he, he went into you know argument mode with me, like God didn't speak, the only way he speaks for scripture. I said, well, how did you know you were called to preach? He said, God spoke to my heart. I realized that God's always speaking, but we're not always hearing, or we're hearing, but we don't know the, the word for it, so we think we're in opposition of something. Actually, I go, dude, you're prophetic. How else could you know the heart of God? So I would say to you, this brother and others is is when did God change? When did He stop speaking? Because before the foundation of the earth, He knew me, called me by name. Yeah. In the beginning, He spoke. I know there's three, four hundred years of silence in between Malachi and Matthew. Hmm. Was He really silent, or or did people not want to hear what He had to say? I don't know. We don't have any contextual things for that. Then Jesus is the Word, so so Jesus is always speaking because that's who He is. 
How'd you get here? God dreamed you up. He spoke you into existence. So you're created by the word to, to, to hear the word, to, to, to become a word. And, and it's, it's, here's what I love uh, about the Lord. Like he is so patient with us. I had this conversation with my wife, like I was saying, she was saying, what are you going to do on the podcast? I said, I don't know what, we'll just start talking. And I said, I think it's really cool. I think that uh, Will wants to start having people that actually kind of disagree with us. Well, how will that work? I'm like, it doesn't have to be an argument. Like, right. come, let's reason together. And like, it's not about you, me persuading you to speak right. in tongues or to prophesy, but it's actually like hearing each other's hearts. So right. I love books like this. Yeah. But I also, you know, I, I love, you know, uh, amazing books on the on the prophetic. Like this actually kind of keeps me in check. This Oof. right because we we throw we have these yeah. Christianese and charismatic ease yep. words that we throw out. Like I was getting convicted when you're saying that. I put a fleece up before the Lord, and this door, the Lord opened a door. Right. Like, like I, I want to be accountable for that because we, we flippantly say things, and, and we lose the fact that prophecy is supernatural. That, that, that the, the, the God of the universe knows me. Like, he, yeah. Like I know this still small voice. Like I've I've heard it. I also heard him like thunder waking me up from death. Like I, you know I've I know that I've lived with it. I've been in a, a twenty six year conversation with the with the Lord, you know, and, and it's this, this beautiful thing. And so whenever I go and I, I minister a lot, what people don't know a lot about me is that I minister at least a quarter of my time, maybe a little bit more in non-charismatic yeah. churches. Um, and I get grilled sometimes. I spend hours with pastors and elders and boards where they're questioning me on my theology, what I believe. And I just say, Hey, I don't care about speaking on a Sunday. I don't care about, you know, what you let me do or, or, or not. I'm fully submitted to, to, to what you want. But can we go on a journey of what the Bible really says for, for the next year? Can we just do life together, go on a journey? And they do that. I've never had one time where a pastor or a church goes, you're a complete heretic, right? It, it's actually rightfully discerning the Scripture, not making it say what I want it to say. Charismatics right. of all people, we get guilty of that. 